You know, I speak a lot about my own personal history, and I often use that as a bridge to talk about the success of Canada. So what I thought I'd do this morning with you is reflect a little bit on what makes this nation successful, what we need to build upon, what we need to champion, what we need to value. But to also talk a little bit about some of the challenges we face and how some of the good work that you're doing will help address some of these challenges and talk about how we can do even more and do even better. I often speak about the success of this country being the fact that we are such a successful, diverse, and pluralistic nation. I myself am not an immigrant, as Ratna pointed out. My parents had the very good sense to immigrate to Canada when my mother was pregnant with me. And in fact, when I was growing up, I often wondered why my parents and my sister had these fancy citizenship certificates that they had to use when we traveled, and all I had was a lousy birth certificate. But that lousy birth certificate, even though it says Toronto on it, um, <laughs> luckily I had the good sense to move out west when I was one. I really was precocious. But um, I have a different message when I'm speaking in Toronto, but I can say that when I'm here in Calgary. <laughs> one must adapt, which is probably one of the things that we're talking about. Um, but that lousy birth certificate, as a matter of fact, uh, is probably the most precious thing that I own. And that is simply because of how fortunate we are in this country to be living in a place that is, in fact, a model of diversity for the world. I often misquote the Aga Khan. Uh, one of these days I should find the actual real quote. But he often talks about Canada as being a model. And he talks about Canada as being one of the most successful examples of experiments in pluralism in all of human history. And I think that's true. And we must realize that we live in a world where, since my election, right? I seem to count time by a different calendar these days. But since my election, we've had the Prime Minister of Great Britain, the President of France, the Chancellor of Germany, all tell us that, in their realities, multiculturalism has been a failure. And it's not to us to question their reality. It is their reality, after all. But it is to us to tell the story loudly and proudly of a place where immigration strategies work of a place where multiculturalism works, of a place where diversity works, of a place where pluralism works. It is often said that the world needs more Canada, and in this case, the world really does need more Canada. And we must continue often to tell this story. And we must reflect upon why it does work. And I have an idea that I want to share with you, a thesis, if you will. All once a professor, always a professor. I think the reason that it works here is because Canadians as a whole are remarkably generous in sharing opportunity, in allowing all to have access to the same kinds of opportunities. And we particularly see that here in my own city, here in Calgary, which I often talk about as the epitome of Canadian meritocracy when I'm being all academic. When I'm being less academic, I say, here in Calgary, nobody particularly cares what you look like, or what your last name is, or who your daddy was. They actually care about what you bring to the table. What are your ideas? What is your ability to make those ideas happen? What is your passion for execution and for success? And that is indeed a remarkable gift. In some ways here in Calgary, we have benefited from the fact that it's an accident of geography. No one is from here. And therefore, in order to be successful, we have to be open and accommodating. In my office, I have seven or eight people. None of us is a native Calgarian except for one. And the one who is the native Calgarian is my chief of staff, whose name is Chima Nkemderim, whose family came here from Nigeria and Ghana. Which says a lot, I think, about our community and what we are trying to build together. And this idea of sharing of opportunity is, I think, an important part of that. It's an important part of who we are and who we need to be as a community. You know, sometimes when I'm being very indulgent, and some of you have heard me say this before, I think about myself, because that's always fun, but 
I think about the reaction that the rest of the country had after my election and how people were excited maybe, thrilled maybe, but mostly surprised and a little bit dumbfounded. Um, and as I said when I was in Toronto last, I think the reaction could have been summed up by saying, hey, that's not what Calgary looks like. But in fact, this is what Calgary looks like. It's what Canada looks like. And I think that that is tremendously important. And when we think about what that means, you know, sometimes I, as I say, when I'm being indulgent, I think about the morning after my election, where I was stumbling around on about one hour worth of sleep doing national and international media interviews. I've never watched the 30-minute exclusive with Peter Mansbridge because I'm terrified. <laughs> it was my 24th media interview of the day on one and a half hours of sleep, and I have no idea what I said. But hopefully it was interesting. Um, but I think about kids waking up in the city that morning after the election. And regardless of their income, their ethnicity, their background, their family status, their economic status, regardless of what corner of the city or what neighborhood of the city they woke up in, they woke up that morning and their mom and dad made them breakfast as all moms and dads do every morning, got them ready for school, and while they were getting ready for school, probably flipped on the TV or the radio or showed them the newspaper and showed them what had happened. And I hope that every one of those kids, just for a half a second, thought to themselves, what a city I live in, what a country I live in, because I know that here I can be anything. And I think that's particularly important for us to value, to grasp, and to hold on to. But it's not all milk and honey, as we all know. And one of the questions that we must grapple with as a community is the question of how we help all Canadians succeed, how we share that opportunity with all Canadians, particularly with people who come to this country. And it's, not as, it's, it's good, it's very, very good, but it needs to be much, much better. And we need to think hard about how we do that. And having those debates and discussions about diversity does not mean having stupid conversations about the kirpan, right? Why do we worry about these things? Has there been a sudden spate of kirpan-related violence that has been unreported? Of course not, right? We're way beyond those discussions, and we have to shut ourselves off to the small-minded people who want to have those discussions. Issues of the kirpan, the burqa, the hijab, these are not helpful discussions. And we need to be able to move beyond that to talk about the real discussions around what faces our communities. And the most important thing here, I think, is how we make sure that we are not wasting human potential in our cities. Many will people will tell you that the myth of the cab driving doctor is not true. I grew up in East Calgary. My neighbors were cab drivers. <laughs> the myth of the cab driving doctor is true. And we have crafted for ourselves a system where we tell people around the world, come to Canada because we want the best and we want the smartest. And you have this point system and we want you to meet all these points and then you come here and we say we want you specifically because you're trained in this field, because you can help our Canadian economy. And the moment you get here, we say, except you can actually work in your field. It's the greatest bait and switch game in human history. <laughs> and we've got to stop it. And that means that there are a number of things we have to change at the policy level. We must do a much better job of accrediting people with credentials from other countries. There's no question of that. We've talked about it for so many years. The rubber has to hit the road and we have to do it. And I'm very pleased, for example, to hear from the Alberta uh, Association of Professional Engineers, Geologists and Geophysicists that they now, when they um, have newly minted people with the engineering designation, about three-fourths of them are foreign trained professionals and one-fourth of them are recent Canadian graduates. That's very exciting for me to hear. It means that we're starting to actually work on this and I think that's extremely important. But in, in addition to all of the policy changes, what we must do is we must work at the human level and that's why you're all here today. And that's what I really want to reflect on today. For, for far, far, far too many immigrants, the issue becomes one of losing hope for oneself. The issue becomes an opportunity of, you know something? 
It's not worth my fighting for my own credentials, for my own ability to work hard, to work in my own profession. I'll drive that cab, I'll work in construction, I'll work in the trades, I'll make some money, and I'll damn well make sure my kids go to university and they'll be fine. And that certainly is a path that is important. But I think what we need to do is ensure that everyone who comes to this country has the ability to achieve their own human potential. I'd like to tell you the story of Guido. Guido is from Colombia. He was a political refugee. He came to Canada in 2007. For the last four years, he has been supporting his family through a series of jobs that paid pretty good. He worked in construction mostly, blue-collar labor work, uh, and was struggling to build a nice life for his wife and his small children. But people kept saying to Guido, you are capable of so much better. You're capable of so much more. You've got to make a temporary sacrifice. You've got to improve your English language skills. And you've got to be able to do something more than what you're doing now. And at first, he resisted. But these mentors, both formal and in, well, mostly informal at that point, convinced him that he had to try to do something more. And he managed to enter a very innovative program through Bow Valley College here in Calgary, where that mentorship became more formal. Now, why do I know Guido? Because a very, very brave woman at Bow Valley College phoned me directly and said, we have this program and we help to mentor new immigrants and one of the things we do is we place them for a six week period free of charge in a workplace. And the reason I'm calling you is because, I, and I thought she was calling to ask me to place some of these folks at the city of Calgary, which is a very large employer. And I thought, well, why are you calling the mayor's office? And she said, we want to place Guido in your office. And I said, OK, why? Because Guido was the mayor of a city in Colombia before he became a political refugee. So having heard that, I thought, OK, six weeks of free labor. This could be interesting. And Guido joined my office seven weeks ago. And of course, he did such a marvelous job that we were able to extend to him a contract to stay and continue to work in my office. And in fact, today is his first day. Which is why he's not here today. He has work to do. But, uh, <laughs> but just think about that one tiny story. And think about how that one tiny story replicates among so many stories of people and of families and of the future of their families. And how it all happens, yes, because we get the policy right, yes, because we get the programs right, those things are vitally important. It wouldn't have worked for Guido if the language training programs hadn't been there. It wouldn't have worked for Guido if Bow Valley College had not been there, right? But most important was the human aspect of making that connection and taking that relationship further. And that's why the work that Allies is doing uh, in terms of mentoring is so tremendously important to the community because all the best policy in the world, all the best programs in the world don't make a whit of difference if we don't make the human connection for why that is important. And that is how we uh, reduce social is isolation, and that is how we allow people to get that opportunity and live up to their potential. The City of Calgary is a proud partner in this. We understand the need for us as a city to make sure that all Calgarians, regardless of their tenure in the city or where they come from, are sharing in that great opportunity. And I do want to say just for a moment, and the people who actually do the work are in the room, but I just want to say for a moment how incredibly proud we are of the work we're doing with the Calgary Region Immigrant Employment Council um, in this pilot program on collaborative mentoring. And I just want to share with you a couple of very interesting stats. Now, I really do need my notes. I usually speak without notes, but numbers are hard <laughs> to remember. Launched June 1st, 2010, 34 matches, 10 employer partners, 50 employee partners, 50% of the mentees found employment, 100% would recommend the program to colleagues. As a professor of nonprofit management, that's a pretty good outcome. 92% um, um, strongly, agree, agree, strongly agree or agree that they have a better understanding of Canadian workplace culture and norms. 85% strongly agree or agree that they have a better understanding and knowledge of their own profession. And in addition, of the mentors, oh, I thought I had a stat here. 
I'll just tell you that of the mentors, well over 90% of the mentors also say that this was a valuable experience for them. So this is a good thing. And that's 34. How do we take 34 and make it 340, make it 3,400, make it 34,000 across this country? That, my friends, is the work you get to do while you're enjoying our beautiful city. So, well, I want you to enjoy Prince's Island and our great restaurants, and by the way, it's seven months into my job, and I finally, finally figured out how to order up nice weather for you, so you're welcome. <laughs> First few times didn't work. Um, but while you're doing all of that, I encourage you all to continue to connect, continue to mentor one another, if I may, to figure out where the successes are, to figure out where the clusters of things that are really working are. CRIC is one of them, there are many others, and to make sure that you continue to do the good work you do every day. Because I do want to thank you, not for being here, and not for the work you're going to do, but I want to thank you for what you do every single hour of every single day. You have chosen to make your own personal careers in a way that helps our neighbors. And to me, that is good, that is noble, and that is the very best of citizenship. So thank you very much.